Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining in another week. We've got a great show planned for you today. Later on, I'll have with me Mike Hooper, who is an attorney for GCMP Development, who is proposing a grand development, large scale development on the hill just above Woodsdale as you go up Route 88. And we'll be talking all about the ins and outs of that, of what's planned and what needs to happen next in order for them to be able to do that. But first of all, we'll start with some of our usual features. And I want to talk about a community event and really one of my favorite community events each year, and that's Ogilvy's Winter Festival of Lights. This is the first week for the Festival of Lights, and I think it's always a great time of year. It starts kind of to kick off the Christmas season here in the, in the valley, and you know, so many people from out of the area come in here to the Wheeling area. And if you haven't checked out the lights in the last year or so, some new features, uh, not only some new displays, but also 3D glasses now that turn each point of light into some type of Christmas object. For example, you have the glasses on, you may look at the lights and see a bunch of reindeer where each light is or a snowflake or whatever it may be. And the cool thing about that is that you get to keep the glasses and when you go back home, um, they work on any point of light, such as the lights on your Christmas tree. And uh, kids really enjoy that. There's four different uh, kind of characters or designs, so to speak. Uh, and it's just really kind of added an extra element to the Festival of Lights that I think people will really enjoy if they haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. And there's new glasses this year compared to last year. So you'll get a kind of a fresh set of glasses. But I think it's also very important that if you have friends, relatives, um, or others that you know out of the area, business acquaintances, that you really introduce them to Ogilvy and the Festival of Lights, you know, this time of year, and then introduce them to Ogilvy throughout the, the remainder of the year. Uh, just last week, I was uh, having lunch uh, with some folks from Pittsburgh, and I said, why don't we go up to Ogilvy? And we went up there, they'd never been there before. And these were, uh, you know, executives, and they said, gosh, this is great, maybe we could have a corporate event here sometime. And I showed them around the lodge, I showed them the different meeting spaces and the different offerings, and told them about the cottages and the uh, the rooms and the golf courses and the uh, you know all the the other things that are there to offer at Ogilvy, and they were really excited about the, the prospect, but they just didn't know about it before because you know they hadn't been up. So t take an opportunity to really, if somebody's coming to town, take them up and show them Ogilvy. Uh, maybe invite them to have lunch there. Those types of things uh, because it, it really it's it's our park. It's a city park. It's the only self-sustaining city park in the country. And it's something that we can really be proud of here in the area and that we need to take care of and uh, really make sure that it's here for, for years to come like it has been uh, over the past 90 or so years. So uh, check out the Festival of Lights if you get an opportunity. Uh, it runs all the way uh, after the new year. I'll give you a little legal tip here this week as well, and that is that some insurance benefits are hidden in the policies that you've purchased, and you may not realize they exist. Uh, and sometimes uh, benefits can even go up uh, unbeknown, unknowingly, you know, perhaps to the, to the lay person, if you don't ha have someone take a look at that, an attorney that maybe is used to look at those. For example, on an auto policy, uh, sometimes you have medical payments coverage and it may say you have $1,000 worth of coverage. Well, some policies I've seen over the years, that $1,000 doubles to $2,000 if you're wearing your seatbelt when you're in an accident. Uh, there's other times that uh, medical payments coverage, you may think, well, okay, that covers medical payments, but sometimes it also covers things like funeral bills. Uh, and you may not know that if you don't have an attorney looking at that. So it's always a good idea that if you have some situation arise to have an attorney who's well versed in insurance coverage to take a look at the policy, take a look at your declarations page and tell you exactly what you do have available to you so you don't miss out on anything that you've been paying for that you may have an opportunity to collect uh, when uh, something does happen that gives rise to you having uh, a claim. So have an attorney take a look at that. I'll give you a quote here this week as well and this comes from John F. Kennedy, one of my favorite presidents, of course, the 35th president of the United States. And he said this, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. I thought that was a fantastic quote from President Kennedy. Um, you know, so many people were just so afraid of change for whatever reason it may be. They look and say, well, this is the way we've always done it, or I'm not comfortable with this, or I don't want to do it that way. Uh, you have to change with the times. You have to change when opportunities present themselves where you will miss the future. You'll always be stuck in the past or the present. So great quote there from President Kennedy. We need to take a break. When I come back, we'll have with me Mike Cooper. We'll be talking all about the GCMP Development Corporation and what they're planning to do there in the Route 88 in the Woodsdale area. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. At Bordas and Bordas, when we see this, we do something about it. We can't prevent bad things from happening, but we can get justice when they do. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice.
recommended by the highest authorities. Danoon Lumber. It's like a bad one's coming. Yeah. Right? Welcome back to the show. This is my favorite time each week when I have a guest with me. And this week, my guest is Mike Hooper, who is an attorney for GCNP Development Corporation, who has been looking at a project on top of the hill along Rod 88 in the Woodsdale area as you head up toward Ogilvy. And uh, been in the works now for a little while, and uh, but some recent developments and some things moving forward. Mike, thanks for being here on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, you know, um, as the attorney and kind of spokesperson, so to speak, for GC and P Development Corp, um, you've been involved in this thing and making presentations to the various boards or et cetera, uh, and people that need to make this decision. So this project is, you know, if you look up the hill kind of from C3 Church, it's kind of right up above there for people that Correct. don't necessarily know, uh, back where Robinson Auto was back in the day before it moved to the Highlands, et cetera. And, uh, you know, been the subject of a lot of talk uh, at city council meetings, zoning planning meetings, in the newspaper, on the news, everywhere. <laughs> and why all the fuss about what's going on here and what is exactly happening? Well, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. You started with the quote from John F. Kennedy about change. And change is difficult and change is inevitable. So uh, my clients had the foresight a number of years ago to start acquiring land. And over the years, they've acquired, oh gosh, over 100 acres right in that area. So it goes from C3 Church uh, to, and, and it goes back on what they call Woodsdale Hill, uh, back to about where High School Avenue is. So it's a, it's a fairly significant piece of land. I, in fact, I'd really uh, dare say that I, I think GCMP is the largest landowner in the Woodsdale area. So what they, what they had in mind is uh, put in a development that would benefit the city of Wheeling, number one, because that's certainly one of the very important impetus of, of this development, but something that's going to attract new people to the Wheeling area, something that's going to attract new business to the Wheeling area, and uh, what has been very popular in many, many cities across the country is a mixed-use development. So we have proposed a 50-acre mixed-use village. So uh, rough numbers, about one-third uh, would be residential. Uh, the, the middle section would be retail, and then the other section would be office, institutional medical so really it's a place where you, you can live work and play you know why all the you know talk and why do you have to go before the, the boards and things of that nature what needs to be done in order for this to happen well quite frankly there's never been anything like it in the city of Wheeling there's no no particular specific zoning for it there's no particular future land use for it if you look in the city code you won't see anything about a non downtown mixed use period. So we're at the very first of three significant stages. This is to amend the comprehensive plan to change the future use from something called conservation development to a new use, a special use, that will allow this mixed-use village. All right. Now, when you talk about a village and you say part residential, we're talking about houses, apartments, condos, and, and what types of value are we talking about on these uh, residential uh, living units? Sure, there'd be about 75 to 80 of them. Uh, we've designed them to be townhouses, uh, quick, easy maintenance. Uh, they would be owner-owned. Uh, my, my client doesn't have an interest in uh, being a landlord for the residential side of things. Um, but, you know, if I could, I'll, sh I'll, I'll give you a little yeah. idea here. Uh, what, what you see in, in the bottom here in yellow is the residential area. And then the retail area is what's shown in the, the reddish orange. And then the blue is the office and institutional uses. So to give you some bearings here, uh, you'd be coming up from Vance Church, headed towards Ogilvy Park. Okay. Okay, the, uh, the ball field is right here, and that's where the big turn comes into play. Okay, so that's the Gregsville uh, field there that's kind of right across from kind of diagonal from the C3 church before the little convenience store there we're right. talking. C C3 church is, is right here. Okay. Right here. So basically they've acquired all this land. Um, now, just to make it very clear, we don't own down into Woodsdale. There's well over 700 feet uh, between GC&P's property and the nearest Woodsdale property. Okay. Um, so the, the other beauty of the, this project is we were very sensitive to the historic nature of Woodsdale. So as we construct this, and as, as you'll see in some of the other pictures, we've developed it so that there would be a visual barrier, so that if you're in the Woodsdale area and you're looking up towards the development, you, you will not see this project. 
What will you see? What you see right now. It'll look the same as it looks now. Okay. Nothing changes. But a big part of this is the road. So one of the issues that we've had historically is, is the traffic. Um, I, I, I guess it's, well, it's, it's good and bad. Uh, it, it's good in the sense that the number of cars on that road has come down over the last 10, 15 years. It's bad because it's a sign of the times that Wheeling is losing over 500 and 550 residents a year, and that decline is continuing and expected to continue. So, uh, but we're still aware of, of the road issue. So let's see here. What we've proposed here and presented to the city of Wheeling is uh, the Route 88 Ogilvy Corridor Improvement Project. We already have sufficient homes on the right side of the road coming up, up towards Ogilvy, uh, pretty much where the creek starts and where it crosses over. And what we've proposed here is to put in new sidewalks because this is a federal turnpike and it's supposed to have sidewalks, but they've never been put in. And if you've <laughs> tried to go from the ball field over to convenient to get yourself something to eat, yeah, there, there's no sidewalk. It's pretty dangerous there. So you, you'll see that we've also put in a, a deceleration and acceleration lane that goes into the development itself. So you come in, there'll be an inter intersection with a light right here and then you can go right on your merry way. There'll also be a second entrance into the development on Wad Waddell's Run. So if you're coming from the other direction or you simply just want to go around and you know, kind of catch the back way, so to speak, that's in place. So we need to take a break. I, I really want to see uh, more of these. So when we come back, sure. uh, we'll give more of these out and I want to get everybody to get a full idea as to kind of what the plan is here because I think this is very helpful. At least it's educating me for sure. So <laughs> we'll take a break, then we'll come back. We'll talk more about this proposed development there on Route 88. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borda Show. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Neil Brown. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company, the Mountaineers call, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Hi, Banks did great today. He looks great after his spa day. For being such a good boy, we'll take these two. Great. Thanks to my free Kasasa Cashback checking account from Belmont Savings Bank, my Kasasa Cash is paying for my dog's treats. Kasasa pays you cash back on everyday debit card purchases, plus refunds on ATM withdrawal fees nationwide. Open your account today at Belmont Savings Bank to take back banking and enjoy monthly cash rewards with Kasasa. Welcome back. I've been speaking with my guest this week, Mike Cooper, who is an attorney for GCMP Development Corp. We've been talking about the proposed development on Route 88 and Wheeling as you head up toward Ogilvy. And Mike, you know, you were talking about you know, the road improvement and uh, but some other plans as well. Sure, sure. Well, I'll, I'll just give you a quick glimpse of the, the road improvement itself. I showed you where it is, but, but this is what it's, it's going to look like when you turn right into the development. There'll be two two acre pads on either side. Uh, the, the, the ponds that are gonna be in place here that you see up in this picture uh, are pretty, but they also serve a purpose. Uh, the, the minute we start doing a, a development there, the West Virginia DEP requires certain water remediation, uh, which is not required as long as the land is in a raw state. So uh, they, they serve a purpose and, and they're really nice. Let's talk about water for a minute. Sure. One, of the, one of the objections, so to speak, from a lot of the Woodsdale residents is, hey, there's gonna be all this water that flows down, it's gonna cause a problem in the Woodsdale neighborhood. I mean, what would be the response to that? Well, the water that's coming down now is the same water it's been flowing down for hundreds and probably thousands of years. Uh, nothing has changed there. Uh, people were talking about the fact that some of the property was timbered. Well, th that, that's really a non-issue. That hill has been timbered pretty much every 50 years as far back as I can think of. It's a natural function, it's allowed to happen, but it doesn't trigger any requirements. As I said, the development actually will divert water from the Woodsdale area. Uh, the, the first of which is, let's see if I can show you a picture that shows it here. Uh, you'll see on the Woodsdale side of the property, there's what I call a high wall, uh, which in essence creates a basin. From Woodsdale, you won't see the development because it sets down about, about 95 feet into 
uh, into the hill, so to speak. So this is the view from the west looking to the east. So uh, it looks big, but it's not all that big. It's about the size of the Cabela's area if you were standing on the one corner looking down uh, out to the west. Um, let me give you another view of that. And when you say the Cabela's area, are we talking the entire Highlands or just, no, no, just, no, no, just no, no, Cabela's? No. no, this is only 50 acres. Yeah. Our largest retail store is smaller, 20 square thousand feet smaller than the existing Kroger in Woodsdale. Okay. So it, it's a village. It's not meant to be a competition to the Highlands. It's not meant to be a competition to anything in downtown. It's designed to bring people into the city of Wheeling, to pay tax dollars into the city of Wheeling that will spark additional development within the city and definitely downtown. I think it's important for people to recognize too that you know this whole thing was kind of the idea of, of, of one of the the partners of GCMP Development Corporation, Kevin Coyne, who's a longtime Wheeling resident. His family's lived here forever. This, this isn't necessarily people coming in from the outside and saying, hey, let's come do this in Wheeling. This is uh, a Wheeling guy saying, hey, this is my idea for doing this here. Exactly. And that's why it's in Wheeling, because he wants it to be here. He wants to give something back to the city. And both Mr. Coyne and his, his partner, Doug Grayson, are very well experienced in development. You know, this, this isn't a pipe dream. These are two people that have, have developed, will develop, and certainly can make this development happen. It's not a question of if something will be put on this hill. It's a question of what will be put on the hill and what is going to benefit the community the most, what's going to, uh, in essence, I think, keep people here and attract new people. Uh, I've, I've been in Wheeling for over 30 years, and there's been nothing like this in the city of Wheeling. I, I worked to bring the uh, Lowe's development into town. It was great, but it was just one step. We, need to, we have to do more. The people who are coming in from the cracker, uh, the oil and gas people, <laughs> th there's nothing that makes them want to come into the city. They're going to the Highlands, which is great, and we don't want to take people away from that, but we want them to also spend their money in the city of Wheeling. It's going to take something like this to get them in the door. And certainly, it's, it's a great place to be. Th this is the opposite view. Uh, you know, instead of looking from the west to the east, it's, it's to the east looking to the west. So you can, you can definitely see where that high wall is. And all the water is going to be engineered to slope away from Woodsdale Hill down at, at about a 2% grade. So it's going to slope away into specifically engineered and DEP, EPA, you name the permit process. I've got two pages of permits we need. Uh, but when this comes into play, er everything's going to be according to Hoyle. So, what, what is the time frame on, the, on this type of process here? Well, the, the, the very beginning portion of it can be in within a, a year and a half. That's the road improvements, and that is the um, two acre pads that will be right at the bottom of the hill. And when that happens, will also be starting the rest of the development. And it, it is kind of like the Highlands. They, they didn't wait till everything was done before they opened it up. You finish a section, you build, people start shopping while you're doing the rest of it. So from start to finish, it's gonna be approximately five years to get everything done and all the buildings ready to go up there. But as I said, it's gonna be a, an ongoing opening, continue to work, opening something else, continuing to work process. So. Um, it, it, it's pretty darn exciting. What's the next step? What has to happen now? Well, the next step, let's see what I have picture-wise. Oh, we'll save that for later. Uh, we are in front of the Planning Commission. Uh, they, they need to approve that, uh, which is the Amendment of the Comprehensive Plan. After that happens, then we go to the actual zoning. All we're doing right now is saying, hey, let us move forward with this concept. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means we're willing to at least do it. the next step, which is the zoning of it. And when you say the the first step was you know the uh, what do you mean by let you do what the con what the concept what, what concept needs to be approved uh, what, what needs to be changed to to what already exists so to speak well right now there's kind of a catch-all for every hill and wheeling which is called conservation development which is it's nice but because it's steep and because it's a hill and uh, we, we just think it, it's better unless there's new technology or somebody who really wants to spend a whole lot of money leave it the way it is. So what we're asking the city is, hey, we have a use that will definitely benefit the city, that will work nicely on that, which less than half of the total volume of the land is going to be used for the development. The rest of it's going to be left trees and green and will match right up with the second half of the hill, which is owned by Ogilvy. So wouldn't it be nice to shop, have dinner, and then walk on the trails from 
GCMP back into Ogilvy, and if you want, you can walk all the way to Schrader Center. I mean, it's great. Um, so the trees on the side of the hill aren't going to change. The green isn't going to change. This is a green development in how it's been designed and how it's going to be implemented. Well, I appreciate you taking all the time you did to come here today and explain it to folks. I learned a lot about the, the uh, project it. here today, and uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see uh, how things develop here in the uh, weeks and months ahead. But uh, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here, Mike. Appreciate the time. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll be talking sports. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. When reviewing your oil and gas offers or royalty check statements, do you wonder, am I being offered a fair amount? Do I feel comfortable reading the statement? Do I have peace of mind? If you answered no to these questions, you need Bordas Mineral Management. Our passion is helping mineral owners protect and expand their mineral wealth. Our examiners tell you whether you're being treated fairly and getting paid what is rightfully yours. Bordas Mineral Management. Be protected. Have peace of mind. WTRF has an awesome pizza deal to save you some dough. WTRF is working with your favorite restaurants to offer the best pizza deal in the Ohio Valley. Buy your pizza card today for only $24.95 and get 10 large pizzas from these area restaurants. Hillbilly Snack Shack is under new ownership, getting a facelift and open, now offering pizza. Follow Hillbilly Snack Shack on Facebook to keep up on all their dinner specials. And don't forget the wings, blue collar, white collar, no collar. It's all good at Hillbilly Snack Shack. Get yours today at WTRF.com. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports. We'll start in the city of Pittsburgh, where the Steelers with a big win over the Indianapolis Colts. Remember, I said the Steelers would need to get one of two between the, the Colts game last weekend and the Rams game coming up. And a last minute missed field goal, not a real long one either, by Adam Vinatieri, one of the greatest kickers in NFL history, who's really gone downhill this year. But Steelers defense gets five sacks. Mason Rudolph, a lot of completions, but not too many yards. And that, that kind of concerns me as we look ahead because just not a lot of success going down the field. A lot of short passes, but the defense keeps playing well. I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick with the pick six, a big play there in the game. And Steelers now four and four uh, and face the Rams at home this week. I think this one will be a tough one, but I never really doubt the Steelers at Heinz Field. I'll say the Steelers and another close one, Steelers by a field goal this week, and they get two for two between this Colts and Rams game. They'll really be in good shape heading forward, but it looks like it's going to be tough to win the division because the Baltimore Ravens beat the New England Patriots, knocking the Patriots from the unbeaten ranks this week, and the, the Baltimore now stands at 6-2, and two, of course, with the win over Pittsburgh as well. And Lamar Jackson looking like an MVP candidate, really changing the way the quarterbacks play in the NFL. It'll be interesting to see in the years to come whether others try to model uh, that type of uh, quarterback system. Uh, where he can run, he can throw, he's very mobile. Uh, they're in the pistol formation where the running back's right behind the quarterback in the shotgun. Uh, very interesting and fun to watch, but uh, you know, we'll see if he can stay healthy and also uh, if they can continue to have success or if people figure it out eventually. Sticking with professional sports in the NBA, a uh, bit of uh, sad news, Steph Curry with a broken hand that's going to have him out for several months. They say they won't even reassess him or, or give an update on his, uh, on his condition for three months. So, you know, the Warriors within six games uh, lost Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and now Steph Curry uh, for extended periods of time uh, over the, between the last year's playoff games and the beginning of this year. So Warriors uh, likely will not be returning to the playoffs. And, you know, I gave my uh, NBA Finals picks uh, last week. I said it would be the Lakers over the Bucks. The Lakers off to a hot start here. Uh, really looking impressive with LeBron James and company. And uh, also sticking with professional sports, how about the Washington Nationals? Start off with really poor start to the season and end up winning the World Series with the first team ever to win four road games to win the World Series. Uh, the road team won every game in that seven-game series. Uh, looks like now the Houston Astros pitcher Garrett Cole heading out of town. Uh, in fact, right in the post game, he said, I'm no longer an employee of the Astros, which was interesting. But uh, speaking of baseball, the Pirates fired uh, General Manager Neil Huntington. They'll now have a new president, general manager, and manager heading into next year. Let's set out your college football Saturday. At noon, the Mountaineers will be hosting Texas Tech. That game will be on ESPN2. They're coming off that tough Thursday night Halloween loss at Baylor, where really two snaps over the quarterback or the Wildcat quarterback's head proved to be so costly. Texas Tech has lost three in a row. Uh, what happens now? I keep waiting to see if the Mountaineers put Deggie in at quarterback. He's the transfer from Bowling Green. 
four regular season games left now. Remember, you can play in four games and not use up a year of eligibility. So they could play him in all four of these games and he still have the same amount of eligibility left. Will they go to Deggy and see how he does? Uh, I'd like to see what he can do. I mean, he was, he was good at Bowling Green. I think he's the quarterback of the future. Mountaineers have to win three of the last four to get to a bowl. I think they win this one at home. Also at noon, Maryland at number three, Ohio State. That game's on Fox. Maryland, not real good. Ohio State, really good. Too much talent. The Buckeyes win this one. Another noon game. This is a big one. Number five, Penn State at number 13, Minnesota on ABC right here on WTRF. Minnesota's undefeated, but they haven't played anyone. Haven't played anyone. Penn State's been tested. Of course, had that big win against Michigan a couple weeks ago. They have weapons everywhere. Nittany Lions win this one in a big, big 10 game. Then at 3.30, the game everyone's been waiting for right here on WTRF. CBS, number one LSU at number two Alabama. Both have had two weeks to get ready. Tua's coming off an injury. Joe Burrows has been leading the Heisman race, but Tua's right up there. Give Nick Saban two weeks to prepare. I like Alabama's chances always. It's a home game for them. Roll Tide. I think they get it done, but I think this is going to be a really fun game to watch. At 7.30, just a little note here, Notre Dame 15 at Duke. That game's on the ACC network, which isn't carried on cable locally. So if you're looking for that game, you're not going to find it. You may have to listen to the radio or go somewhere that maybe has a satellite that you can pick it up. But I think the Irish win that one by a couple of touchdowns. And then at 8 o'clock, Iowa State at number 9, Oklahoma on Fox. How did the Sooners bounce back after an off week that followed that loss to Kansas State? They're still in the title hunt. There's Of the eight teams ahead of them, all but Clemson have to play at least one of the other top eight teams in either the regular season or a conference championship game. I like Oklahoma's chances. I think they win this one, setting up a big game against Baylor in the not-too-distant future. And then speaking of Baylor, I think that's my upset special this week. At noon, Baylor is at TCU on FS1. Baylor just hasn't played the toughest part of their schedule yet. I don't think they've played a real tough schedule. Oklahoma and Texas still to come. I think the Horned Frogs win this one at home and upset Baylor. TCU gets the win on, over number 11, Baylor. But really shaping up to be a great finish to the end of the college football season here. We'll have Penn State and Ohio State. We'll have Ohio State and Michigan. We'll have Oklahoma and Baylor before it's all said and done. And we're going to have an SEC championship game with either Alabama or LSU probably versus Georgia. So a lot of fun there. Um, Oregon and Utah will probably face off against each other at some point. I'm really looking forward to it all happening. And I thank all of you for joining us here again this week. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time on The Jamie Borda Show.